Hello everyone, so today we're going to look at uh, transients in electrical circuits and we're going to start with a very simple case of capacitor switching. So up to this point we've basically covered DC circuits, static circuits where the voltages don't change at all, everything has been resistive. Now we're going to introduce capacitors and inductors and you already should have gone through the theory of operation and so on. I'm sure you have gone into YouTube and looked at some of the videos uh, some animations and so on. There's some good ones now on um, the theory of operation of the inductors and capacitors. So hopefully by the end of this session you should be able to solve for the voltages and currents in simple switched RC circuits and if you remember our talk on Wednesday it, this really means that um, we're looking at Thevenin equivalent circuits connected to uh, the capacitors. So what do we mean when we have a switched circuit? Uh, it's not like the example of the car we had where the car goes over a bump but very similarly when you uh, when you close this switch here the level of the voltage at this point say raises from 0 to 10 or to whatever is at supply voltage Vs so it goes from 0 volts up to Vs volts at this point here so it is as though the uh, circuit is going over a step and we actually call that a step voltage so uh, when that happens the the voltages and currents begin to change and what would uh, usually happen well what happens if you remember the theory of operation of the capacitor is that uh, if you close this some charges are going to start flowing into the capacitor plates the voltage is then going to start building up as the charges accumulate until the voltage across the capacitor is equal to the supply voltage. At that point uh, you have no voltage across the resistor and since you have no voltage across the resistor you have no current through it and then we have reached steady state and this is why the capacitor behaves like an open circuit. So when that switch is closed Remember it was previously open and we closed it now. We have a loop, a voltage loop. So we could write a voltage equation, a KVL equation. So if we start at this point and we go here, we're going up by VC. Then we go this way and we go up by VR. Then we go this way and we go down by VS. Of course, I could have done it the other way around. It would just put everything on the other side of the equation. So I also know that I, the current in the circuit, which is the same as the current through the capacitor in this case, since all the elements are in series, is equal to C dVc dt. And note this is dVc, the, current, the voltage across the capacitor. This is what we're looking at. It's not the voltage across the resistor or the voltage across the entire circuit, whatever you think that means, um, but the voltage across the capacitor. And the current here means the current going down into the capacitor. So the current this way, which is the same as IR, the same direction I have for IR here, is equal to C dVc dt. So I could write, rewrite my equation now as, sorry, minus Vs plus, I know the voltage across the resistor is IR, and I know I is C dVc dt, so RC dvc dt plus vc equals zero. So I can write that equation now. And I have a first order differential equation which I could go ahead and solve. This is the way that I learned to solve it. Uh, the first order differential equations a lot of years ago. Uh, some of you might uh, be, by, might be more familiar with doing it by logs. Whichever way you could do it, it's okay. Uh, you could go and, and review your differential equations. I'm not going to go into that. You have to know it, but uh, I expect that you do know it, so I'm not going to go through the whole derivation. But what you need to know at this point is that at the end of, the, of solving it, what you end up with is this. And from that we need to solve for our constants and we solve for our constants 
by looking at our initial conditions or boundary conditions. So we look at T is equal to zero because we know the conditions that T is equal to zero. Since the voltage across the capacitor cannot change instantaneously and it was zero before the switch was opened, when the switch is closed now it continues to be zero for that initial period. What we call zero plus the instant just as it switches. The supply voltage is Vs. So if we substitute these into the equation, T is 0, it will make this 1, this 1, and uh, I will get that the, and the, sorry, the voltage across the capacitor Vc is 0. What I'll get is that C is equal to minus Vs. So I could substitute that into my equation now, and then I will end up with this down here which is Vc is equal to Vs multiplied by 1 minus e to the minus t on Rc. And this is typically known as the charging equation of the capacitor. So you can see here what happens is as t goes to infinity, then this exponent will go to minus infinity and the value of the whole thing will go to zero. And then 1 minus 0 is 1, and you'll get Vc is equal to Vs. And that is when we've reached steady state at t is equal to infinity. So that is for the charging of the capacitor. Now, but you could always has a you could also have, sorry, as I mentioned before, the uh, discharging of the capacitor. We looked at when the switch closes from being open, but what happens when the switch is uh, closed and we reopen it. We will also get a transient there. Just like you could drive up a step with your car, you could also drive down a step. So this is the same thing that happens. So if we had the, the circuit originally closed and charging through this path here and then it becomes fully charged and then we switch this switch down to here. Now this part of the circuit is out and I just have this part here, a resistor in parallel with the capacitor. But the capacitor had built up a voltage, Vc. Now that is going to discharge and drive a current through the resistor so that the capacitor comes back to equilibrium with a, a neutral voltage on each plate, a neutral charge on each plate. So this is the discharging of the capacitor and we have to go through the same process again so we write the differential equation we sorry we write the Kirchhoff's voltage law equation and in this case we have no voltage source so it's just the voltage across the resistor plus the voltage across the capacitor is zero so again we do our substitution I, the voltage across the current is C dVdt. And when we solve, go through and solve our differential equation, we're going through the same process again. We're going through the same process again. When we do this, what we will find is that um, we have, we end up with this equation down here. Let's see, where is it? Yes, we end up with this equation down here which is Vs e to the minus t on Rc. Now, notice when we are solving this, at t is equal to zero, the voltage across the capacitor is not zero as in the previous case. It is equal to Vs, or whatever is the voltage at the capacitor when it was switched. This is, here we have it as the supply voltage, Vs, because we assumed that it was uh, it was closed for a very long time and it charged all the way up. If it was not charged all the way up, Vc would be equal to whatever is the voltage before switching, right? So this Vc is equal to the voltage before switching. And that's a very important point to remember. So now what happens here? Again, as t goes to infinity, the exponent is going to go to zero and the whole equation will go to zero because we have no voltage source now. 
So it's as though the voltage source is zero. So it would it goes to the what is that the voltage of that source, which is zero. So this will go from it will go from whatever voltage it was at when it switched, and it will gradually die down to zero. So that is the charging and discharging of the capacitor. So far we looked at it as though there was no initial charge on the capacitor. But what happens if there is an initial charge on the capacitor? So when the capacitor is charging, say, or if it is discharging, the voltage is uh, the voltage across the capacitor it was initially not zero. So if we go through again our whole um, our whole uh, derivation, we have we get to the we write our KVL equations and we go all the way to the point of solving for the um, solving for the constants, and in this case we have some voltage across the capacitor. Now when we have this voltage across the capacitor what we'll find is that the constant C is equal to Vc minus Vs. So if you remember previously for the uh, for the charging it was just minus Vs. So when we substitute that into our equation now what we find is that we get two terms one term is a charging term and the other term is a discharging term. So we could look at this as the superposition of two things. When we switch and there's an initial charge, we have the charging to the new voltage and we also have the discharging of the old voltage. And this is a general equation that will work for charging or discharging. Because if we are discharging, then we have a Vc which is non-zero and a Vs which is zero. So if we are discharging into a resistor this Vs becomes zero and we are left with only the discharging equation. Whereas if we were charging and there was no initial charge on the capacitor this Vc would become zero and we would be left with just the charging equation. So, so if we look at the um, if we look at the exponents here, minus T on RC, minus T on RC, the same for both of them, what we will uh, see is that when T is equal to RC, the exponent becomes minus 1. And then E to the minus 1 is 0.3679. That means 1 minus E to the T on RC is 0 0.6321, if I did that correctly. Um, so at T is equal to RC, if it is charging, it would have reached 63% of its value. And if it was discharging, it would have reached 36% of its value. Now, at 5 RC, we have E to the minus 5, and that is 0 0.0067, which means if you're charging, you're more than 99% complete. If you're discharging, you're more than 99% complete. And we consider this to be the time for full charging or full discharging. So you could tell what time the capacitor will take to charge and discharge completely just by looking at the values of R and C without having to go through any sort of differential equations or solve any you know complicated mathematics. So um, let's look at an example now. So here we have the capacitor initially uncharged and the switch is not connected to any terminal. Then at T is equal to zero we switch the, the switch to terminal A and close the circuit here. And we want to calculate the time it takes for the capacitor to develop, to develop 10 volts across its terminals. So it's a 20 volt source and we have 5 ohms and 10 microfarads and we want to calculate the time it takes to develop 10 volts across the terminals. So in this mode the capacitor will be charging. So I could write down the, the charging equation so the, the voltage across the capacitor is equal to the supply voltage by 1 minus T on RC. 
the condition I want to find is when the voltage across the capacitor is 10 volts. So I substitute 10. I know R is 5. In this case, the 10 ohm here doesn't do anything to the circuit because it's open circuited. So I don't have to bother with that. And then I have 10 microfarads here for the C. So when I multiply those two together, I get 50 microfarads. Well, 50 um, by 10 to the minus 6, which is 5 by 10 to the minus 5. And once I have this, the only thing in this equation I have to find is T. So I could just use logs and I solve for T in this case. You could go through this and hopefully you should get 3.4657 by 10 to the minus 5 seconds. Now if I wanted to find the time it would take to fully charge, then I would just need to know the value of R and C. R, C is 5 by 10 to the minus 5. The full charging will take place in 5 time constants, so I simply multiply this by 5 and I get 25 by 10 to the minus 5 seconds. Now after the capacitor is fully charged, I switch it to terminal B. And the next thing I want to do is calculate the time it takes for the voltage across the capacitor to reach 4 volts. So I have to do the same thing I did before except in, instead of using the charging equation, I'm going to use the discharging equation. So I'm going to leave that for you all to do for homework. You could discuss it on the forums uh, or in class when you, when you see me. And to summarize, we have, hopefully by now, you should be able to solve for the voltages and currents in simple switched RC circuits. And you don't need to go through the whole differential equation approach. You just need to know the results. What is the charging equation? What is the discharging equation for different conditions? That is when you have um, initial conditions or not. And whether you're switching into whether the switch is opening or closing, so it is uh, charging or discharging. And next, we're going to look at the same thing, but for RL circuits. And you'll see it's very, very similar. It's almost identical, except instead of voltage, we have current. And the equations remain the same.